welcome to Peace and Hope as we start a new year, 2022. Welcome to Peace and Hope. Welcome to Peace and Hope. We are so glad that you're with us today. Whether it's your first time, whether you've been here many times, we are just really glad that you are here. I'm Pastor Brian, the pastor and mission developer of this digital community, and, uh, and I invite you, if you've never been to our website before, go to www.peacehopeva.org and find out more about Peace and Hope. Find out about our ministry and ways that, uh, ways that you can connect with us and ways that you can serve. Uh, just a few announcements to share this morning is that, uh, one, we are very excited to welcome our first member, Anna Schmidt, as a member of our community. And uh, there will be a portion of the service uh, dedicated toward welcoming Anna into our Peace and Hope community as a formal member of the congregation. Uh, also, uh, Lenten services will be held at 7.30 p.m. on Wednesdays throughout Lent. Uh, we will be hosting other congregations around the Virginia Synod, so I'd encourage you to uh, come join us at 7.30. Uh, the link is the same as the link that we use for all of our worship services, www.peacehopeva.org slash worship. And, uh, and through that, you'll be able to, uh, to join directly into the service. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with our prelude. Continue worship with our confession and promise of forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it makes us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace, that where there is hatred we may so love, where there is injury, pardon, and where there is despair, hope. Grant, O Divine Master, that we may seek to console to understand and to love in your name, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Corinthians. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? What kind, with what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a living, a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. And was the man of dust so... As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of man of dust, we will also bear the image of man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. The Holy Gospel according to Luke the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? 
For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap, for the measure you give will be the measure you get back. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Loving your neighbor as yourself is found eight times in the Bible. Eight! That's a lot of times. And I think for the most part, Christians understand the importance of loving our neighbors. And we try hard to live that out in our lives. Loving our neighbors means showing grace and mercy. Loving our neighbors means showing compassion. Loving our neighbors means looking out for their well-being. Loving our neighbors means to serve. I think for the most part, we do this as individuals and we also do this as part of the larger church community. When we help our neighbors, we know who live near us. We are showing love to them. We provide support to feeding ministries. We are showing love to our neighbors when we do all these things. When we get together to make and sell products for raising money for churches, all of those things are done for the support of our neighbors. But today's Gospel reading asks us to do something much more difficult. Love your enemies. This might feel very difficult because we live in a world where division is so rampant. In fact, a quick look around you shows how often the world is quick to find ways of dividing people, creating enemies of people. People create divisions around politics and more recently, mask wearing and vaccinations. Is it possible anymore to side with Republicans on some things and Democrats on another? Can't that be okay? The world seems to think that we need to choose a side. It seems as if it's always an us versus them. And these divisions can create a lot of hurt. I read an article this week about the lifting of mask mandates in Virginia in the schools and how that's impacting children. 17-year-old Alexandra Swan was interviewed by the Washington Post about her experience in Louisa County Public Schools. Here's what the Post said. School now feels, Swan said, like a war zone, a raging partisan battle that no one can opt out of because every single student arrives with evidence of their politics. Those without masks typically lean right, she said, written across their faces before when masks were all required, you didn't. It, was, it wasn't like you were making a statement, she said. This made everything so much worse. And the article provided some stories about what children are facing in schools in light of people that have different views on mask mandates and mask decisions related to COVID. And it's very sad to see, but I suppose in many ways it shouldn't be very surprising. Some Christians even try to vilify other Christians by the way they practice their faith. Is baptism a, a sprinkle or full immersion? With communion, is Jesus actually present or is it just a symbol? Can you be saved if you haven't had a life-altering experience where you know that you have had a born-again experience? Right, these are all questions that have created divisions among Christians for a very long time. So what does Jesus say? Jesus says that even if there are people who hate you, you should love them. 
And he also offers the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do to you. Jesus tells us to be merciful, just as God is merciful. Jesus also says, do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will forgive. Give and it will be given to you. When you think about it, the readings from Luke today form the basis of many, many principles that are fundamental to how we as Christians are told to treat others. And there's a lot of good stuff here. But when you think about it, Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy on us. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Right? When we ask for forgiveness and when we confess our sins, each and every one of us probably has several examples where we don't love all of our neighbors. One way that we as Christians can learn to love all of our neighbors is to find ways of understanding. Find ways of understanding people who are different from us. Take time with people who have different viewpoints from you and realize that they have life experiences that are different from yours. Spend time learning more about people who are different from you. Jesus isn't asking you to change your ways, change your viewpoints, or change your morals and ideals, but Jesus is asking you to love. Now, and this is important, Jesus is not asking you to put yourself in danger. Jesus does not ask people to put themselves in a position to be physically or emotionally abused by enemies. Loving your enemy does not mean putting yourself in harm's way. Loving your enemy does not mean allowing that enemy to continue on a sinful path without consequences. Creating healthy boundaries is important and you can love your enemies from a distance. You can do this by praying for them. Pray that God will help them see the harm they are causing and that they will repent and turn toward God and turn toward acts of love. Remember, Jesus also said this, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus said these words because many times people are not aware of their sinful nature. And so for these reasons, I actually really struggle with using the words enemy, the word enemies, to describe people. Because at the end of the day, I'm not sure that people are really ever the enemy. I think the enemy is really sin, the enemy is death, and the enemy is the devil. But my friends, our first Corinthian reading, Corinthians reading points us to Jesus Christ, who has conquered all three. Jesus conquered sin, Jesus conquered death, Jesus conquered the devil. Our first Corinthians reading reminds us that God gives us a body just as God has chosen, and that this body is a physical body. But in addition to that physical body, God gives us a spiritual body, and the spiritual body is what is going to be raised in glory. Our physical body is full of weakness, but will be raised in power. Our image comes from the physical body, first shown through Adam and Eve, but our image also comes from the heavenly body, which comes from Jesus Christ himself. Paul writes that we also bear the image of the man of heaven, Jesus Christ. God has chosen you, my friends. God has chosen you. Remember that you are sealed with the cross of Christ forever, and this is indeed good news. Amen. Goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours, victory is ours, through God who loves us. Victory is ours, victory is ours, through God who loves us. Goodness is stronger than evil, love is stronger than hate, light is stronger than dark. 
stronger than death. Victory is ours, victory is ours, through God who loves us. Victory is ours, victory is ours, through God who loves us. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for Anna, one with us in the body of Christ, whom we welcome as a new member into the life and ministry of peace and hope. With the whole church, we confess our faith. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's, God's only Son, Son, our Lord, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Sister in Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptism among God's people in this place? I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for Anna in her life in Christ? We you do, do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us welcome Anna, our sister in Christ, to this community of faith and peace and hope. So we're really excited at Peace and Hope to welcome our very first member to our ministry. And Ethan, if you will bring over the, the goodies that we have for, for Anna and Josh. Mom. So we have, uh, we have some Peace and Hope um, items to share with you. Awesome. A Peace and Hope magnet so that you can share others about the ministry. Some Peace and Hope pens, and they are nice pens. And, uh, and these newly these newly developed uh, peace and hope coffee mugs. Because being a Lutheran, you do have to drink coffee. That's right. Because being a Lutheran, you definitely need to drink coffee, and hopefully, be able to figure out how to get said coffee cup out of the box. Here we go. Daddy, but you your don't drink coffee. Your coffee. So this is a peace and hope coffee mug, and Anna, we we welcome you to Thank our community. Thank you. I'm very excited. Thank you. Of course. At the end of each petition, you will hear the words, God of grace, please respond with hear our prayer. The spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Let us pray. You teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your church to follow the leading of your love especially when it's risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy just as we have first received mercy. God of grace, hear our prayer. Nurture fields that lie dormant, resting until it is time to bloom again. Bless farmers and all who cultivate fields and urban gardens. Give favorable weather for planting Bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest and guard against famine and disease. God of grace, hear our prayer. Look upon our world with mercy that we delight in an abundance of peace. Protect all whose lives are marred by war and civil unrest. Release political prisoners and amplify the voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your people cry out for mercy, console hearts that long for forgiveness, mend broken relationships, heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness, 
strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled. God of grace, hear our prayer. You bind us together into one family. Teach us to forgive one another and to resolve conflicts with humility and patience. Bless families of all shapes and sizes and show love to those who are lonely or grieving. God of grace, hear our prayer. We praise you for the saints who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom. As you have raised them to be imperishable and eternal life, sustain us in faith by the promise of your resurrection. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. At this time, share the peace with those around you, whether you're together in altar live, watching at a later time, listening. Um, in any ways, give peace to those around you. As God's people, we are called to give, called to give of our time, called to give of our possessions, called to give of our resources. At Peace and Hope, we always want to remind you to provide gifts of time and resources to your home congregations. If you don't have a home congregation and you would like to consider providing support to Peace and Hope, I encourage you to visit our link below. Uh, our ministry is made possible due to the contributions from our um, from our congregational partners, as well as your gifts. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we go, we go with God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Why are you striving these days? Why are you trying to earn grace? Why are you crying? Let me lift up your face. Just don't turn away. Why are you looking? still searching as if I'm not enough to where will you go child tell me where will you run to where will you run cause I'll be by your side wherever you fall in the dead of night whenever you call and please don't bite these hands that are old
by your side wherever you fall in the dead of night whenever you call and please don't find these hands that are holding you my hands are holding you here in my side wherever you fall in the dead of night whenever you call and please don't find these hands that are Thank you so much for joining us for worship today. Please join us in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.